Interesting, huh? A little different way of thinking about your skills, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to turn to your neighbor, and, I, and I've looked around the room. We're all in couplets, which is great. Um, you're going to turn to your neighbor, and for five minutes, um, and we'll split it up. So let's just say about two and two, kind of time yourself. Um, this is going to be just a, the, we're going to have different kinds of conversations. This is the first one. Um, so what I want you to do is when you turn to your neighbor, I want you to read the four quadrants, right? A, B, C, D. And just have your, li your neighbor listen for themes. Listen for themes. The neighbor's going to listen for themes and, repeat, and say, to the, say back to your, 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 your partner, this is kind of what I'm hearing, right? I'm kind of hearing, you know, you're, it sounds like you're a, and whether you, you mention their passion, whether you mention their lane, there might, might even, even be a tribe that sort of, you know, comes out of it. This is just a very high level discussion just to see what kind of walks off the paper. We're going to actually go a little bit, a little bit later, we're going to go deeper into this, but this is just a very sort of 50,000 foot view, okay? So you're going to turn to your neighbor, okay? And two minutes and two minutes, kind of time yourselves, and then I will, um, I'll bring you back in just real, real quick, all right? Ready, set, go. Who has a story about their neighbor that they like to share? So maybe uh, you were with your partner and your partner, you know, talked about their passion, their areas of passion, particularly their high high, and you were there and you're like, you know what, I think you sound like this. And sure enough, that's what it was. So, or, or light bulb moment. Who wants to talk about their neighbor? Yeah, great. In my case with the Rons, okay, uh, she highlighted her high high was how she likes to analyze it. Yeah. She likes analyzing things. Yeah. But then she talked about her hobby, which was running yeah. and horseback riding. I said, well, they feed into each other because you are gonna she she talked about her points of working and processing it and, and working and practicing and how you're you're going to work and, and analyze your efforts in riding and horseback riding so that you're going to try and be better. Huh. But then she highlighted in the don't do it area her idea of criticism. Huh. And I felt that, okay, if the criticism takes away from the process, takes away from the analysis, takes away from the making of running or horse riding better, that's where you feel it, it, I believe she feels it, it goes into an area where she doesn't want to do it. Huh. But if she knows it adds value to uh -huh. her analyzing or to her hobbies, she's more inclined to do it. That's great. And so would you say that this hobby of yours is something that you'd actually like to pursue more in a full-time way? Could this be more of a lane for you, or is it going to be more, more stay more in the hobby area? Uh, no. Planning or horse riding is going to be a hobby. Yes. Okay. Did you guys talk about, thank you, Anton. Did you guys talk about your um, your high-high in terms of more of your lane as far as what you're going to be doing for paper? No. We didn't oh, you just sort of, you just kind of focused on the hobby area. Yeah. Okay. Just sort of figure out a little bit of a passion. Great. And you said um, behind, yeah. Did you raise your hand? Yeah. I was just thinking. Don just gave me some good ideas and good suggestions about myself. Okay, great. He said that I had my high and my high engaged high uh, high skills. It ran into my hobbies and area and area of the development, which he was, is very true. Because I didn't get the gist of the whole gist of what you were saying, but I'm getting it. It's, it's it's gel. Clicking it's gelling now. now. It's yeah. clicking now because I had someone right here to this person oh, right here. Excellent. So, so you had a little peer a peer coach. Yes. To help you. So to, what was what kind of came out of the conversation? Is there something that you kind of discovered about yourself? Yeah. That um, I'm taking my highly um, high engaged skills, yeah. high skills, and putting it in my low side. Oh. And, and I just it was a run on. Oh. I just took my hobbies and my the high skills and low skills and kind of ran through with it what I like and dislike oh. or whatever. Which I was should have put all my high things, my high skills uh -huh. on my side and my low skills yeah. on my side. I didn't do that. Yeah. It so was an extension of it. Sure, sure. So these are areas that you know what the areas yes. of growth are versus the areas where you yes. really feel solid in. Exactly. Okay, great. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to another exercise, but this next exercise we're going to do together. Okay, so you're going to stay in your couplet, but you're going to help each other with it. So here's what it looks like. Call career motivators. So this is actually a combination. I'm going to explain each one of these for you. Um, this is a combination of variables that will help you to determine how to prioritize your search. So your tribe is going to be in here, your lane is going to be in here, and guess what? All kinds of other things are going to be in here as well because we're holistic people and we have personal needs, not only professional needs. So first of all, in your who. Your who is, is your passion, right? It could be your personality. Anybody ever taken Myers-Briggs or DISC or, right, or Caliper or... Um, PI, predictive index, all of these kinds of personality tests 
are helpful, right? They're not exclusive, but they're helpful to help you figure out kind of who you're being. So I'm an ENFJ. Any ENFJs in the room? One, okay? Connector? Yes, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> we ENFJs are connectors. Um, meaning, I, we, we tend to get our energy from people. That's the extroversion. The N is intuitive, right? We're very conceptual thinkers. F is feeler, very empathetic. And J is judger. We get stuff done. Okay, so we tend to be in jobs that are connector in, 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 of a nature, but also want to um, move, things, move things forward. So there's your who. Your what is your, remember the top left, that's your A quadrant. That's your highly skilled, highly motivated. That would be your lane. That would be your lane, your what. Your where is your tribe. Now, I should say the first two pieces of where are your tribe. If you, if, 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 if you have an industry or a mission focus, but I also put location as a where, why? Because where we work sometimes can be the most important thing, right? If we have family obligations, commuting obligations, right? So especially in this area, if you live in Reston and, you, and a, a, a wonderful job comes up in DC, you think that's gonna be an area of consideration? Yeah. Do you think you should actually apply for that job? Maybe yes, maybe no. It all depends on how that incredible commute <laughs> would factor in to the rest of your priorities. Okay, yes? The question, you were just talking about connectors. Uh, to give you an example for me, uh, I've been involved in politics since most of my adult life. Um, I get a charge on putting things together. Yeah. I get a charge on making meetings happen. Yeah. I get a charge of, of writing something or writing yeah. off and on, yeah. and having people say, okay, I want to talk to you. Yeah. Is that that sounds connector to me too. Now remember, the connectors, I mean, I'm mentioning it only because it's me, but that's only one type of variable. But yes, that does sound very connector-like. Connector but there are other kinds. Anybody else have a different passion that you know about yourself? Yeah. I'm a designer. I love designer. fashion and interior design. Yeah. And does the, does the design work show up beyond... Um, beyond just things of an artsy nature? Are you, do you like sort of putting things together, kind of making sure that things kind of look, are there an order and there's sort of a, a structure to it as well? Yes. That's probably going to fit into the rest of your life. And so the connectorness, right, is one area, but there could be other kinds of, of, of passions that are going on that you may want to sit and think very deeply about. So not only as it relates to politics or only in your case as it relates to design, but maybe how it relates to other things in your life as well. When is your work-life balance? Your travel, your commute, okay? So for those of you who might have families, you may not want to be traveling 50% of the time, right? You may not want that extensive commute. You might not be able to work the, you know, 10-hour days. This is important. Not only because, listen, you're not, going to, you're not going to necessarily know some of these things until you get the interview, correct? But sometimes you just know by looking at the job how this is going to impact you, right? And sometimes they actually mention it right there flat out on the job, and it's a 50% travel. Well, that's a decision for you to make. Now, you might, you might think just, well, sure, well, that's obvious. No. Most job seekers spend about two and a half seconds reading a job announcement. Come on, you know who you are, <laughs> right? And by the way, recruiters do the same thing. <laughs> In fact, the Ladders came out with a study, uh, I guess a year or two ago, that says that recruiters take an average of six seconds to read somebody's resume. It's just because we don't read anymore. We just scan, we skim. So that very important piece of information that could be in that job announcement that your eyeballs have just glossed right over, that could be incredibly important to decide even whether you apply to the job, let alone whether you accept the job. So the more you know yourself in advance, your eyes will have an opportunity to, to not only scan and skim, but focus and really read what is important to you. And sometimes, by the way, if you're a tribal person, okay, you know the tribal people who are in this room, if industry or mission is that important to you, it might just be that that needs to be the very most top thing for you, the top, absolute top priority. It might be that your lane, your career field, is, is subset to that which is your tribe or your mission. Does that make sense? Okay, it's figuring out which is which. Why? Now, this is very, very deep, and you may not be able to figure this out today. This might be something you do as homework. Why is your legacy? Why do you do what you do? Why is a question that we hardly ever ask in our society, would you agree? We ask a lot of what, and we ask a lot of how. We don't ask a lot of why. And this is actually fundamental. It's what drives you. It's what drives you to serve. Why do we work? Beyond paying the mortgage, why do we work? Anybody here work to serve? To serve others, right? To make a difference in the world. 
right, to advance society in somehow, some way, no matter what you're doing, whatever that job is, it doesn't matter whether you're the receptionist or the CEO or anywhere in between, you have an opportunity to serve through your work, and your why is absolutely important. And I will tell you that sometimes your why keeps changing.